Hello friends, welcome to SQL with Manoj. In our previous video, we saw how to create new tables in a database. And in this video, we'll see how to create, how to add new columns to the table and how to remove a particular column from a table. Okay, so let's go to SSMS. Here, I'm taking the same example of the employee table, dbo.employ table, as we saw in our previous video where I created this table. Okay, and I showed you how to create this table in different ways. So here I'm taking just the script part of it, the create table statement. I'll create a new table here. So before that, we will make sure that, you know, in our database demo, we don't have a table, right? So we don't have a table right now. I have just refreshed it. Okay, and I'll create this new table here and I'll insert some rows into it. So these three rows are the same rows that we saw in our previous example. Okay, so just do a select star from table we'll get the records right the three records that we get that we inserted just now so let's check the table present here okay so as soon as you refresh it the table will come over here okay and if you double click and expand it you will can see the columns right whatever columns are there you can see the columns now let's say i have to add a column to this table that is manager id right so there is a simple alter statement that you can issue with the table because you are going to alter the table means you are going to modify the table to add a column so alter table then the table name then you are going to add the manager column then the add then manager id whatever the column name you want to give and the data type right so i will choose integer data type okay so one way is this way other way is the GUI way. This is just the similar way we created this table. We can also add new columns, right? So just you can right click. You can just right click and you can select new column. And over here you can type the name MGRID and choose the data type integer, right? INT. Okay. One way is to just, you know, save it. Okay. Another way is you can even script out right the change that you are doing here so just right click on the change that you are doing and there is a second last option generate change script okay if you just click it you will see so you will see a lot of code but don't worry about that you can ju you just have to check this code right alter table dbo dot employee add mgr id int null okay you can copy it okay if you don't want to save it from here i'm just closing it also you can copy it and you can you know paste it in your SSMS. So this is the same code that I wrote before, right? So I'll just remove it and I'll run this code. Okay. So here, so if I refresh this column list, I'll get a MGR ID with integer data type, right? So let's go ahead and, you know, execute the statement. So you can see the new column is added at the end, right? Now let's say if I have to add this column, not at the end, but in between right let's say let's say there is a new column whatever it is uh, i want to add this column in between how can i do it let's uh, I, i'll show you how to do it from uh, the gui table designer okay let's say i have to add a column between gender and dob right that is let's say uh, father's name so as soon as you right click so, okay so there's a second option to insert a column right insert a column you can put f a t h e r s father's name and same n where care you can choose any length you want okay but the moment you try to save it it won't get saved right it says that saving change is not permitted the changes you have made require the following table to be dropped and recreated because SQL Server will not allow you to add a column in between the columns, right? The other workaround what it will do is it will try to drop the table, recreate the table in the same column fashion that you are providing it here, right? So, but it still does not do it, right? Why? Because it gives you a prompt that, you know, you are not doing it correctly, right? But you have the option to do it. You have either made changes to the table that can't be recreated or enable the option prevent saving changes that require the table to be recreated okay so there is an option this option prevent saving changes that requires the table to be recreated is checked in that's why it is not allowing us you know to uh, do these changes means uh, dropping and recreating the table with the you know similar name so how we can do it let's check it here move to tools menu okay and go to options in the options 
you will see under designer okay and if you click tables and designers right here is a checkbox prevent saving changes that require table recreation okay for now ideally it is this is not a good option to do it but for now we are unchecking this option and I'll click ok ok now again if I do right click ok if, if I do a save it will do it right but I don't know what queries it is going to fire behind so what I'll do is I'll try to script out the changes what is gonna do it ok so generate change script <coughs> so what it will do is to put this father's name over here whatever the whatever the alter scripts it is going to create it will it will create those scripts right so just click on generate change script and it will give you all these things right so what I'll do is I'll copy everything okay and I'll paste it in a new window okay so these are some uh, uh, set options that you know you can just ignore so what I'll do is I'll delete them it is doing so it has a begin transaction means everything it is it wants to do in a single transaction okay so I'm just you know splitting these into multiple lines so that I can explain you so it is create table see here it is creating a TMP underscore employee table right with the father's name then it is altering the table setting the lock escalation of the table to table mode okay so that nobody can do any changes okay here it says if exist select the star from DBO employee if this table exists what it is doing is it is inserting into this temporary table okay with all these columns from where from the DBO employee table right then it is dropping the employee table so here what it is doing it is inserting all the records from employee table into the new temporary employee table okay after moving the records from employee table to this temporary table temporary table it is dropping the original table and at the end it is renaming the table right and what it is doing is it is renaming the temporary table with the new employee table so at the end you get the employee table with you know the father's name column right so so if you do it let's try to execute it okay right so let's let's see here what I'll do is I'll refresh it it shows me the debut.employee table you know with the father's name column right okay let's uh, go back okay I'll close this because the changes are already done so now we saw you know how to add a column in between now let's say if you want to add a new column uh, with not null values means uh, uh, see if we already saw that you know uh, in this table whatever columns that we added the previous column that we added was manager ID all were having value nulls now I want to make sure that you know the address column should not have a value null it should have a particular value right if somebody enters a new record he have to have enter a new value here okay so how can we enforce that right so there is a constraint not null constraint you can apply with the column name whenever you are adding it okay so let's go ahead and uh, add a new column address with the uh, where care uh, handwrit rear type and not null constraint right uh, so regarding constraints I'll be taking this up in my next video so let's go ahead and add this address column with the table okay so as soon as I execute this statement it gives me error uh, let's first check this error what it says it says that alter table only allows columns to be added that can contain nulls or have a default definition specified or the column being added is an identity or timestamp column or alternatively if none of the previous conditions satisfy the table must be empty to allow addition of this column column address cannot be added to non-empty table employee because it does not satisfy these conditions okay so what are these conditions so as you can you know execute the table and see the contents of it so if I have to add a address column over here and also make sure at the same time that you know all the values should not be null so I should be knowing the values beforehand right so uh, if I don't know any value so SQL so will not allow me to add this column because all the columns initially all the values in the columns initially will be null and I am adding this constraint that none of these values should be null so this is violating the rules right so it won't allow me right to add this particular column to the table okay so how can I do that I can add another constraint that is a default constraint right and give it is uh, and give it some value right so whatever the column that I'm adding like the address column it will apply this default string default value to, to that particular column value let's see how it does that alter table table name add address where care 
not null and default na right so let's execute it okay and just to a select okay so it added a column at the end having values and a right so this is the way if you want to add a column having a not null constraint and now let's say if we have to drop this column address how can you do that same thing that we saw for the uh, father's name previously right alter table table name then drop column address okay now it again gave me this error right why it says that object df employee address is dependent on column address df is our default constraint that is this default na right so if you go ahead and you know uh, refresh this list and refresh this column list you can see under constraints that there is a default constraint right and this default constraint is associated with this address column okay so before dropping this column you have to drop this default constraint okay now how can you do that you can just drop this delete this constraint okay I'll uh, script it out the same way I was doing it previously just cancel it okay so this is the statement that you need to apply just copy it close it and put it before put it before the dropping of column okay so before dropping of column I'm dropping the constraint that is default constraint okay so okay so better readability I'm just taking it to a new line okay first of all I'll alter table drop constraint okay execute it right successfully check the constraint refresh it it has gone now you can easily drop the column right like this okay it does not give me this error now okay now let's again refresh the column list see the address is gone now so now we saw that uh, you know uh, how we can add a column at a specific location and we add the father's name in uh, you know between the gender and DOB column right although it's not a good practice to add the column name in between uh, as a best as a best practice you should always uh, add the new column at the end it is just a matter of you know selection of uh, the record uh, rather than doing a select a star what you could do is uh, you can do let, let's say I want a manager ID before father's name okay so what I could do is uh, rather than doing a select a star I could apply all these columns over here okay and I can shift this manager ID column uh, before the father's name right so the result that I will get is manager ID right before the father's name right so uh, it's not a good practice to add any column in between because as you saw the script that we created it did a data movement it created a temporary table okay and it inserted uh, records from the original table to the temporary table at the end it deleted the original table and renamed the temporary table to the original table right so it's not a good practice because uh, if some table has lot of records and you know there are there are some other dependencies so that will go for a toss so uh, the recommended thing is always use alter table add column statement with this all the columns will be added at the end okay of the column list so if there is a requirement to have the column at a certain position you can easily do with a select uh, column list right okay so now let's go to uh, drop a column how can we drop a column let's say I have to drop this father's name column right how can I do it it's a very simple statement uh, just you need alter table okay and drop column name right copy and this and you are done other than this if you don't remember this statement or if you don't know you can do it you can go to the object explorer and uh, point to this column father's name you right click on it and just click delete okay while deleting it will give you a pop-up okay here either you can just click ok to know what statement it executes you can just click on this script component see I already told you this is a magical option right uh, and you can see the script action to new query window okay if I just do that right I'll just click cancel I'll not drop from there see it give me the script to drop the column right alter table table name then drop then column name right the same script what I'm using here right okay alter table DBO employee drop column father's name right execute it and see if you just refresh the columns your father name is gone so this is all about adding a new column to a table and dropping a column to a table okay and uh, let's just clean up the table also okay so this is the way you drop the table right so uh, in the next video we'll see you know more uh, with the columns and uh, the tables and their properties okay so stay tuned uh, please like and please let me know your comments 
for any stuff that you would like me to cover and please subscribe my channel you'll be getting an automated feed whenever I add a new video okay thanks a lot